Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. Now, on this video, this short video, I will keep it short, promise, uh, I've, we're going to be basically fitting, installing a new TPS unit and calibrating it, which is really, really important. These have to be calibrated. Now, you'll usually find on the TPS unit they have a slot on the top so that you can undo the pinch bolt and we can very accurately rotate this on the casting to get the output voltage absolutely bang on and different manufacturers have different ways of calibrating these sometimes they use a resistance value sometimes they use an output voltage value they use the signal voltage um, value at idle and at maximum throttle opening uh, and other times they use their own specific tool like Yamaha have a tool that we plug in and it tells us it needs to be on number three out of a hundred for example or number five out of 100 segments when the bikes are idle and it needs to be somewhere between 95 and 100 when it's at full throttle. Um, different ways of doing stuff so you have to check the workshop manual you need to know the specs for each specific vehicle very important. Uh, if this is incorrectly calibrated then it can cause your bike to run lean or sorry, your engine, bike, car, whatever it is can cause it to run lean or rich. Um, so there you go. Right, so we're gonna. This is this basically is the new TPS unit for a uh, Chinese built motorcycle. Uh, dare I say it? Uh, which is a CF Moto 650 C or oh, TK, the one with the, the panniers and the fairing and stuff. Okay, uh, it's a copy of a, of a Kawasaki bike, I believe. So we're going to install this and we're going to calibrate it. Here we go. Okay, so this is the location of where the TPS lives on the bike and the old unit was on here until a few weeks ago and this is the spindle and if I turn the throttle you'll see that that spindle rotates and it has a cutout on it it's got a, a flat here which essentially provides uh, a driving face for the TPS unit now this bolt just above it is the adjustment bolt it's the pinch bolt so we can actually rotate the TPS unit to a particular position and then lock it off in that position so it can't move again. Okay, so just grabbing the new TPS unit, that basically, it has a little O-ring to help seal it, seal out the moisture uh, between it and the, the casting, throttle body casting. So I'm gonna now, I've put some, put some grease on there and I'm just gonna offer that up onto the spindle and push it in. Pretty tight fit, actually. Shouldn't be that tight. There we go. We're on. Perfect. Now, just pop that pinch bolt back in. Now, I don't want to tighten up that bolt just yet. And the reason for that is we now need to calibrate the unit. So, as you can see, there is some angular movement, angular adjustment of that TPS unit. And with the throttle at the idle position, which is it is now, we're going to rig up our meter so we get an output voltage reading from the, the, the sensor wire, which is the middle wire on the TPS, number two on this particular one. Now the manual tells us that we need to get the, the pickup for the calibration for our multimeter from these two wires here. Now they relate, when they're on there, look, to output signal wire two, that's actually signal wire here, and of course this number three is earth just like our bench testing in the previous video. So to do that, we're gonna to need to back probe. We don't have the special uh, harness that CF Moto have. So all we need to do is just drop those pins down between the wire insulation and the, the rubber grommet that's there. That's one. You've gotta go a long way down to get onto the contact. There we go, perfect. Okay, so the next step is to connect up the multimeter, and that's going to be our... Oh, let's get that plugged in first, I think it'll be easier. Can't offer that up there. Click. Perfect. I think we'll get rid of that. Oh, there we are. I can tuck it around the back. Cool. Okay, so positive, which is the signal output, needs to go into or onto the center back probe, center pin, there we go, and the earth is 
number three pin, which is the left hand one in the picture. There we go. Okay. Now we can turn on the meter. Voltage, there we go. Jeez, can you see that? Yes, you can see that just. Okay, and we can turn on the bike. Cool. And if we rotate that round, you'll see that we can change the voltage. Now, I've got to do this reasonably quickly because after a few minutes, the uh, ECU, if the bike doesn't start, will cut that 5 volt feed. Now, at the moment, we're at 2 point, uh, sorry, 0 0.258 volts at the idle position. We need a minimum of 0.4. The spec is 0.4 to 0.7. Now, I want to run as low as I can. So, if I just turn that round. Okay. So, as I'm, I'm now turning the TPS very slowly clockwise, I'm aiming at 0.4. Well, I'm going to cut. There you go, look. That'll do. Okay. So, we're at 0.414, which is right down the bottom of spec at the idle position, which is where we're at now. Now, as I rotate that throttle around, we need to, we're permissible to a maximum of 3.4 volts at the throttle fully open. So we'll bring that round, slowly opening the throttle on the bike, and that's turning the TPS. We want 3.4 as a maximum. Pretty much there. There we go. So that's throttle fully open. We're just under the 3.4 max. Excellent stuff. Very happy with that. Okay, so the new TPS is fitted to the bike and dialed in. It's calibrated. Minimum spec was uh, 0.4 to 0.7 volts output signal at idle. And at full throttle, we should have been somewhere between 2.9 volts and 3.4 volts output signal. To get it within that range, I had to be absolutely at the minimum spec at the idle position, so as near as I could get to 0.4 of a volt. Otherwise, when I opened the throttle fully, I was getting above 3.4. At one point, I was getting 3.9 volts. Um, what's more important to me is the position at idle. I don't want that bike to run rich when it's idling. Chances are, if it does, then it's probably going to start to foul plugs and it could stall. Worst case scenario, if it's running slightly rich at full throttle, more power, basically. Now, sure, the O2 sensors are going to pick up that rich mixture and the ECU is going to, is going to adjust fueling to try and get back to stoichiometric ratio anyway. So there is some onboard, on-the-fly adjustment going on constantly anyway. But I feel that the idle positioning of, of, of the uh, TPS sensor is more important than the throttle fully open positioning or the output signal. It's not often you're on full throttle. Okay, well there you go. I hope you found that video uh, helpful. It's pretty simple fitting TPS units, but it's very important that you get the positioning correct and you actually calibrate the TPS uh, to the correct position. Okay, cheers. Uh, if you have any, uh, any comments, then please do leave them down at the bottom. If you do have any comments on this uh, particular video, then please leave them down at the bottom. If you found it helpful, then why not subscribe to the channel? Just click subscribe and you will get straight away any notifications from now on when new videos hit the channel. And there's three, four, maybe five, sometimes even more videos every week going up there uh, to help you guys out fixing your bikes and your cars. Okay, well my name's Andy Young, I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland. Cheers for now.